I V M. Sometimes it feels like all the weight of the world has fallen onto my shoulders, and it usually happens on my downtime while I'm enjoying a nice game of cricket. It's like my family realizes that I'm watching cricket and just rush to ruin it for me. Then my mom will come and ranting about some problem with the neighbors. My wife will come and shouting about how we need to redo our kitchen. Plus, also some problem with the neighbors. And my daughter will come and angry at me because the color of the new car we bought is not what she had wanted, which is apparently the biggest crime a father can commit. Plus, of course, some problem with the neighbors. Hmm. Ah, if only things could be just the same, even if something were to happen to me. Unless. www.hdfclife.com select select done hmm things aren't so bad after all live calm with hdfc life click to protect life the life protect option protects your family from financial uncertainty visit hdfclife.com to know more and for terms and conditions Here's your smart fact of the day. By now you probably also know about this fact that I'm going to share with you. Batter Ishan Kishan, India's wicketkeeper batter, was the most expensive player at the IPL 2022 mega auction with Mumbai Indians breaking the bank to get him at 15.25 crores. Now compare and contrast that with what Mumbai Indians spent to get Arjun Tendulkar Sachin Tendulkar son I think his price was about 30 35 lakhs if I'm not mistaken and the fact that a player like Suresh Raina was completely left unsold he had a base price of 2 crores but nobody took him welcome to smarter with said and in this episode I'm going to look at the IPL auction how auctions like these work and is there any particular lesson that we can take when people are you know looking at auctions and is there something that we can take and apply to ordinary life let's go you know auctions are always very exciting so if you look at auctions that are typically showcased in cinemas you have some diamond or some ruby that is being showcased and you know the, the guy at the you know counter is going going once going twice and then somehow suddenly that ruby is stolen and you know how the story goes right we've seen so many escape thrillers like this Uh, emanate from some auction settings and auction houses like sotheby's have become quite famous and memorable just by their names now auctions in the sports arena have been quite interestingly uh, done over the past few years and they started off in america with their football and the baseball and it went down to all the european leagues and then finally reached indian shores with the ipl but the basic fund of an auction is simple you know people uh, are uh, represented people remain unsold people get sold people are fought over for and uh, you know that this is entirely in the pursuit of making an unbeatable team to win a specific tournament that allows for that franchise to do justice to its business model its business plan and also you know do well in the tournament so how does an auction actually work and how should it work well i suppose the most important thing that we have to realize is that there can be a wrong way towards approaching an auction like this and the right way now i'm not sure what all these franchises have done and there can be a lot of fact- factors in which people are picked up by you know a, a team and some of those factors can be around you know is the guy good enough to get Uh, bums on seats you know is the guy good enough to actually uh, you know uh, get people excited about their team is he a talismanic player and and all of that and i'm just using the word he because you know we are talking about the ipl which is uh, a male dominated league but the same thing would apply to any auction won't it so that is one way of looking at it but if you see the m- movie moneyball and that's the movie that i typically get my uh, guys who study strategy and project management with me to see as part of their cor- course and we figure out you know what it takes to look at an auction differently so in that you know Brad Pitt's character is the successful manager or 
the manager who is finding himself in a very weird dilemma the dilemma is that they they are a team wherein young new precocious talent is born they become great they showcase their t- talents and then they are picked up by stronger teams with bigger budgets who can actually afford to poach them in the next season now that is a terrible business model to have because what you are doing is you are investing all the hard stuff in the, a particular player who then becomes good enough to be sold and get a bigger uh bang for his skill set uh, at some other club that means that your club is left the, all the poorer especially if your budget cannot increase which means it is going to end up not doing very well in the tournament so what happens in moneyball is an analytical approach is taken rather than a player dri- driven approach and this has so many ramifications what re, uh, you know is realized by an analyst working with brad pitt is the fact that eventually you have to win a tournament so if you have to win a tournament what are the basic metrics that require to be done in order to win in this right so if you look at the ipl auction imagine that you have like uh, eight home games and eight away games or whatever it is then your strategy could very well be as to okay our home game is uh, has a larger ground and therefore we need people who have have a certain ability to clear the fence and we need uh, spinners because they will not get so and you know i could go on and on mm-hmm. about uh, individual strategies but instead of boiling them down to players how about actually looking at the skill sets that are required in order for those metrics those success metrics to be met now that is a radical way of approaching this auction so when you say okay i need a bunch of these 10 skills okay and which is the best way in which i can get these 10 skills at the least possible price and then suddenly you might end up with some strange names on your roster rather than the typical marquee players who are big i think shane won and the rajasthan royals did that beautifully well in the first season of the ipl and ended up winning the tournament and the moneyball character and the moneyball team ended up you know having an unbeatable run and actually ended up playing in in a final that nobody was expecting them to be in in spite of their meager budget so there are a lot of benefits of actually going all analytical instead of saying mm, this player looks good or this player has is in form or is this player so instead of making it all player centric make it metric centric and ask yourself analytically what is it that is required in order to win now i promised you can there be a lesson that we can take from these auctions into normal work or normal life so let's take a normal work situation and try and apply the same so instead of saying oh i will assign this task to xyz because i trust him and he's always done these kind of things before and he will be able to deal with this kind of work well there is some merit to that of course because trust is something that cannot be beaten but how about looking that at tasks and work pieces and projects in an analytical way wherein you try to figure out what are the functions that need to be actually done in order for that project to be successfully executed and is there a metric for that and what will mean that it's successful and once you have these two things in mind you suddenly realize that okay it's quite possible that we might look at you know giving this project to two different kinds of people or maybe even a different team or maybe uh, you know uh, outsource the whole thing there are so many factors that come into mind when you actually go all analytical a lot of intelligent companies are already doing that but a lot of mediocre companies and mediocre managers don't end up doing enough analysis moneyball style or ipl auction style in order to reach you know the desired result at the minimum possible risk and cost i told you there's a lesson there in this episode starts with I, the ipl auction but goes beyond the ipl auction i hope you can use it somehow and uh, maybe reach out to me in case you are using it or you plan to use it in any project coming your way in the near future i would love to know how it goes and by the way if you like this podcast of mine you can always subscribe to it do like this episode and if you like stuff like this well just go to ivm podcast there there wherever you get great podcast from there's a lot of fantastic stuff out there and hey if you like me i'm the traveling professor and you can always connect with me on instagram or on linkedin until next time then until next time
Hi, I'm Rohan Joshi, and on my podcast, the show about crypto, I've been having some pretty cool conversations with industry experts about what exactly cryptocurrency is and what makes it so exciting. If you haven't already, please check it out on the IBM Podcasts Network. Now, a quick shout out to my fellow crypto heads. We've got a listener survey going on, which will take not more than ten minutes of your time to fill out. So please check the link in the description and help me out by filling it up. Don't forget to tune into a show about crypto on the IBM app and wherever you get your podcasts from. Hey everybody! It's been another great week on the IBM Podcast Network. On advertising is dead. Varun is in conversation with Vedant Lamba, sneakerhead and founder of the Main Street Marketplace. Vedant shares how his vlogging routine led to the creation of his sneaker company. On Shunya One, Sheila Ditya and I are joined by Tarun Chabra, founder of Neemans. We talked to him about how he started the shoe company and built a value-driven brand. On Big Talk about tiny humans, Devi Shobha and Meghna share a four-step guideline for talking to children about death. On Say No to Drama, Chetna drops some truth bombs about the happily ever after of life post the wedding. And on Hans Vani, here's the story of Us Bhir Me Wo Kon Tha. It details the tragic story of the laborers who had to migrate their villages on foot during the pandemic in 2020. Do follow us on social media. We're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And remember, if you're enjoying this show or any of our others, for that matter, please do tell a friend. Don't forget to rate us on any other platforms that you're listening to us, whether it's a rating, whether it's a review. It all helps. And do remember to check us out on YouTube. We have a number of channels. They're available on ivmpodcast.com/slash/youtube. And finally, we'd like to thank our sponsor. This week, Bank of Baroda, Coinswitch, Kuber, and HDFC Life Insurance. Thank you so much for making this possible.